Greetings and many blessings to you. Welcome. I am the one known as Jesus. Welcome, Jesus. And I've come because there have been many quite requests for me. Who would like to ask questions? I imagine that that is why I was summoned. My message for you is to, I could preach all day about many different things, but that is not why I'm here today. I just am concerned about how much negativity is coming upon some. And it is like an addiction. It is hard to get rid of. Their negativity is spawned by continuing the cycle of negativity. They do not know how to get out of the cycle. And that is why there are those here to help with negativity one to another. Now, when you break the cycle of negativity, it is by thanking God. It is by reaching out beyond it. It is by thanking the good things to come, reaching out to the good, reaching out in a positive way, even though you may not feel positive, but finding that positivity somewhere in a blessing, in the fact that you have a home, that you have a family, that you're, you have food, that there is something to give thanks to God about, something to reach out and accept for positivity and break the cycle of negativity because it is a cycle and if you continue to be saying negative things the cycle continues the cycle continues because universe only hears God only hears I only hear what you have to say and if it's negative it pushes us away we can't get as close it's not like you're bringing us in. You may be saying, God, please help me, but you are not saying, thank you for helping me. And not that we want to be thanked, but the gratitude goes out to the universe. This message has been said before. This message is powerful because when they hear positivity and gratitude and thanks, for the things that are coming and for the things that you have then they can open up to you in a greater way not because they want the thanks but because you have been thankful and have given praise and have given them the understanding of who you are and why you are great negativity spawns a whole atmosphere of negativity. Great love can change that. If there is someone that has a great loving energy, they can change the, a room that is full of negativity. Why? Because it is much stronger. It is what is their true self. Because negativity isn't the true self. The true self of humanity in many, many species is positivity. And that makes it stronger and easier to break up the negativity because that's who you are. You have the spirit of God within you, which you've heard many, many times, the creative spirit of God. And it is a message that needs told over and over and over again because not many grasp it the way it should be grasped. They do not see that or hear their voices when they speak these negative things. They hear only what they want to hear, and that is that they are right and everyone else is wrong. Ah, there is a problem there. If you can look at other people and say they're wrong. Because unconditional love looks at other people and sees their bright, shining soul. Sees their goodness and their love and does not condemn or judge them. But sees that bright light which is them. 
And therefore, if the negativity comes forward, then they know that it is not themselves that is giving the negativity, but it is the problem of the person. And it does not have to be your negativity. It does not have to be part of who you are. But yet, you can come back and speak to their positivity and say, Ah, oh, but thank God that you, that you are my friend. Thank God that you have great qualities. Bring them up and not feed into their negativity. Because when you feed into their negativity, you also are ne being negative. And the soul is shrouded. And when people look at your soul, they try to see that bright light through a shroud. They can still see it if they're unconditionally loving you. But they can see that it is dull. But they will love you anyway. They will bring out as much positivity in you as they possibly can. Now, many of you get tired of hearing blah, 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 good, do good, do good, do good. It's not about doing good. It's not about, oh, I know in the Bible it says, do good works and you will... Yes, but if you do good works and they're not in the right intention, then therefore not. They might help somebody, but they don't help you. Because you are not in the right frame of mind for doing it. It's like, oh, i got to help these people. And if you feel like you are under pressure or that you have to do it or you don't want to do it, but you do it anyway, it's wonderful that you helped. But your attitude and your intent was not there. Do you understand that? If you want to, out of love, out of greatness and understanding, to give to someone or help someone out of the love of your heart, out of the love for them, out of the greatness of what they... The, the sadness of your heart to give them love and peace and understanding. This is a great intent. But if you arbitrarily give, just to say that you have been giving, this is not the right intent. And it's not the right way to, for you to get blessed. Sure, you will get blessed for giving, but it will not be the, the kind of blessing that will come with great loving intent. Does that make sense to you? Now, I got off track a little bit. But the negativity that plagues the third dimension and many other dimensions as well can be avoided when you know how to reach out beyond it. There are many that struggle with this. Many that are so unhappy and they just cannot muster the energy to pull out of it. And it's like a drug addiction because it, does, it is a cycle of dependency. You, you actually become dependent on your feelings. And the, they pull you down, and you don't want to depend on that, but that is what it does. It just continues in a cycle of negative, and it pulls you down until you feel like you are not even existing, that you're just tired and depressed. Let's try to pull beyond that. Reach out. You do not have to, in, to be even in a positive frame of mind to thank God. You don't have to be in a positive frame of mind to thank God. You can thank God anytime for anything intended to be thankfulness to God or the universe, or Mother Earth, or any of the angels that have helped. Thank God. And after a while, if you continue to do this, there is no way you can stay in the same negative frame that you were in. You start to rise up. Some people have learned this. You begin to rise up with your intentions, with your beliefs that the goodness is coming, your hope increases, the light at the end of the tunnel is a little brighter, 
and the, you have some say, oh, I've tried that. That doesn't work. You stopped too quickly. You didn't give it a chance. Reach out beyond your darkness. Reach out beyond your darkness. This cycle must be broken because those that are usually very depressed and very neg and negative are the ones that are being kept down because they have a gift or many gifts and and third dimension and those that are negative want to keep them away from their great great purpose great purpose and if you think that is wrong look at those people that are going through great turmoil they have great gifts they have great understanding of spirit and they've lost they feel like they've lost it sometimes some of them feel that they've all this has all gone away because something they, it was stolen from them the depression has stolen their gifts the, the negativity has taken them away and now they are without that and that even brings them down lower but when you reach beyond reach beyond therefore there is hope there is that help and you know what all the angels in heaven all the spirits around when you call out and ask for help and say thank you God for help thank you all those that are helping when you ask for help will they not help they will but you have to ask in the spirit of gratitude in the spirit of praise and thankfulness does this make sense to you because this negative bondage keeps the ascension down because why because those that are awake in the fourth fourth dimensional energy and are in this depressed state have to be brought up by those who are bringing the light forward and so they are awake and you do not want to be awake on the ascension but I do not mean to make you feel bad about that because it is not something to feel bad about because we are here to help with the ascension and those that are light workers are here to help with the ascension and so therefore we have no discouragement for you we have we do not say oh my goodness look at that person there's such a weight no it is not like that it is not like that we are happy to help we are happy to lift you up we are happy to be what you need when you need it if you let us know what you need and we are listening when you speak but if you're always speaking negative things and always speaking in a spiral of depression it is hard for us to help because we can't get through it we really can't because you have decided that that is more important you say I don't want it it's not more important it's not what I want then reach beyond it find that which is beyond it because that is the only way out of it find that which is beyond it is there questions now Yes, thank you for that. I think that's what we needed. Um, <clears throat> one question that was asked by Safira was um, Rever Reverend Sung Moon Young Moon said he came to finish Jesus' mission on earth. Is this true? Yes, he came to finish a portion of the mission, that portion which was cut short. That portion that showed more unity and more understanding to the individual, yes, Jesus, myself, at the time when I was here, spoke about salvation and the way to come to God and things of that nature.
but the the message of how to become more united as a people more united in understanding of the word was not quite complete many words have been spoken about that many thoughts have been brought to that however reverence on young moon was able to reach out in his depth of personality and unite people bring people together in a great purpose and find those that join together for a, the greatest light and therefore his mission was accomplished in some ways there is always more the spirit is so in depth as he once said he could not tell you everything that he knows because you're not ready for it same with me I could not tell everybody what I knew all at once it was a it was I had to teach from a very elemental teaching ground to let them know how to grow and how the spirit worked and to become part of it and <clears throat> bring it in in a way that was valuable to them and he just was more advanced at that because people grew and that they did find the light but they also found that the religions had boxed them into a certain belief system and made lots of rules and regulations that were not necessarily ones that I had brought to you or God or anyone else these were to control the masses these were to keep the masses in line so that they could understand where they were moving and and try to control that movement to God but if there was a bad minister or a bad priest or a bad teacher they could move the flock in a very bad direction and this happened many times also because they were men calling on God and if they could not understand the Word of God if they do not feel it in their system which many of them started off as a ball of fire and then burned out and then they were just giving platitudes and it was not it was just like the Pharisees and scribes and and different things like that that had no real message except for watered down information but not spiritual it was talking about spirit but it wasn't the essence of the feeling of the drawing of the fire of the spirit which is necessary and Reverend Moon had that fire <clears throat> and he knew how to teach properly but the world was not ready for all the things he had to say and he knew that and so he was put off as a cult and is anything new does anything new come to the world that is not called a cult when Jesus came they called him a cult that was my name in many places you're just a cult figure you're just gathering the masses for your own means for your own understanding for your own power hungry little movement people thought that's what I was about some people did but when they realized that they could find healing they could find spirit <clears throat> that was a different story and when they people could find that from Reverend Moon it was a different story because they never gave him a chance Did that answer your question? I I believe so. Thank you. Um, um, also, do you have a message for Liney? I have a message for everyone, but for Liney, I know who that is. Keep the faith, Liney. I know there are many things that seem to go astray in a way that's un, not understandable and but there are things coming that will be very great for you 
You have much powers and energies that you can't even tap into yet and doubt that you even have. But do not give up on that. Reach out beyond the negativity. Reach out beyond yourself. Because your belief system pulls you back, puts you in a trap, and therefore you can't see those things that are beyond you, that are part of you that are beyond you. So yes, you live in a very third dimensional world, but fourth dimension is wakening up and will show you a new part of your life. Okay, thank you. Um, there was another question. Is Can you give us a direct positive direction? We know about the negativity. Oh, sorry, somebody. Um, Partly anyways, and need more specific positive direction messages. Yes, positive direction messages are wonderful. Reaching out beyond the negativity is part of the, is part of the positive message. Thankfulness and gratitude, that is the, the message right there from the negative that is specific. Praise, thankfulness, and gratitude, very specific. In, in pulling yourself away from negativity. That was specific. Another very positive thing is to meditate into in the spirit and know and find out what is needed for you to become the perfect person that you are. Bring in the thoughts that you want to be the perfect person that you are. This does not mean that you have to give anything up. This does not mean that you have to change who you are, but become who you are in a perfect way. If, if you are resonating that this is part of who you are, then accept it. Bring it forth. Make it part of your life. And do not be ashamed of yourself for things that society may, may shame you for, because if it is you, you must be you. Now, that is another very positive message because a lot of people are hiding behind the disguises, trying to fit into molds, trying to bring themselves into a place where they fit with other people that they don't fit with. Why? Because they're not being themselves. They would fit much better with that, that crowd if they were truly who they were supposed to be and not trying to be who their friends want them to be, or who these acquaintances wanted them to be, you cannot be that person. And, and that is why you hear the word plastic. People are plastic because they are not real. And, they, and people can see through that, that you're not being your real self. You're not being who you are in the spirit, in the emotion, in the body. There is another, that is another way to bring positivity to your life, is to accept yourself. Get rid of the guilt. Why? You, you may have done things wrong. People may have guilted you. People may have said things to you. Guilt, 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 negativity. Get rid of it. God has forgiven it already. If you want to say so, I have forgiven it already. The angels have forgiven it. We do not seek out the negative in individuals. That is a misconception about God. He is not coming to look at you for judgment at this moment. He is looking at you to bring out the spirit that is within you. He is looking to bring out those things which he put in you. This soul is a creative, beautiful, wonderful portion of God. Do you think that he wants to come and make you feel worse about that? Do you think he wants to come and say, oh no, that soul doesn't belong to you because you're not worthy of it? The fire of the soul is his love and gift to you in a great way. This is, you are a creator, you are a part of him. Oh sure, your belief systems keep you from doing many God-like things. But you are able to do God-like things. What, what happens when somebody's trapped in a car 
or under a rock or something and you see this and your adrenaline rises and you go pick up this huge heavy rock. Your adrenaline activates the strength in your body. That's a miracle, isn't it? You are not usually that strong. You are not usually that able, able to go lift a, a 400 pound rock so that somebody's leg can be free from it. But this happens. Why? Because they believe they can help. They believe their, their belief system at that moment is, I'm going to help this person and there's nothing that's going to stop me. I'm going to help this person and third dimension is not going to stop me. Now they don't think all those things, but that is actually what they're thinking. It's just like they're, they're just acting on an impulse and lifting the rock and letting the person foot free and then afterwards they went I lifted a 400 pound rock what was that all about it was about spirit it was about intention it was about love it was about many positive things and they caused the body to have the strength to do that miracle. Ah, the miracle was done. Correct? Yes. So therefore, my message to you is to be who you are. Find that person. Do a meditation. Go in and say, who am I? Let's bring out the spirit of who I am the gifts of who I am, the understanding for myself of who I am, and heck with everybody else because they're going to see by example who you are. All the wonderful things your example will bring is who you are. Now you're giving an example every day to everyone. Is it the example that you want to give? That's my question to you. Continue. Um, Jesus, on on that note, um, what happens sometimes that uh, many a times <laughs> we or people are afraid to be rejected. So how do you deal with those thoughts of being afraid to be rejected? So you try to be somebody else or hide yourself in order to be feel quote unquote loved or accepted let me put it this way when you bring out the spirit of who you really are and someone rejects that it is their problem and not yours you must be who you are you must be accepted for who you are trying to be someone else you will be rejected there's no question people will reject because they, they know that you are not yourself. They find that you are not being true to yourself. People can see that. When, you, when you're not being true to yourself, when you're trying to fit in the mold, don't you, don't you see those people? You look around your everyday third dimensional world and you see those people trying to jam themselves into the mold of business or into, and some of them do it very well because they've, They've learned the tricks of the trade, if you would. But are they happy? You must be happy with who you are. Not afraid. You said afraid, fear, doubt, fear, doubt. Those are the destroyers of positivity. Fear and doubt are great destroyers of positivity. I've said it many times. So if you fear and doubt, of course, something's not going to be right. If you fear that you don't fit in, get rid of that fear because fear is a destroyer. It, it stops your creativity. It brings you into a place of submission. It brings you into a place of great... You, you are more susceptible to the negativity that others put on you when you fear and doubt. 
others can put negativity on you and you accept it and bring it into your life and say, yes, that's the way I really am. But no. Find your true self. Because how can they not love the God Spirit that is the true you? How can they not love that which I and my Father have put into you? The great love, the gifts, the understanding. Some people say, I have no gifts. But you know what? If you fit in with being your true self, with loving and doing the things of God and the things that resonate with you, not having to change who you are in your life or whatever, but just understanding that your spirit is who you are, you will change. You will, you will reach out beyond the negativity also because they won't be able to keep you in. You are a leader. All of you are leaders, but to be a great leader, you must also follow. You must also know how to follow, because a great leader knows when to back down and follow the suggestions of his people or of a, pers of a certain group, because they are right to make suggestions that doesn't mean you're not being your perfect self because you still believe all the things that you believe you still are understanding that your your message and your truth is still there but it may not be for that moment it may be not for that particular moment but you will know that if you are in touch with spirit you will know that if you're in touch with who you are because there is no shame in who you are. There is no doubt that you know you are, what you are to do. And, that, and it may not come to you right away. You may just know that the Spirit is working in you and bringing you to your perfect self. Let it happen. Don't be afraid that somebody else is going to bully you. Because it cannot happen if you're not afraid. If someone puts negativity on you, you don't have to accept it. You don't have to accept it. You can say, okay, thank you very much, and move away. But you do not have to put that negativity on yourself. That is their negativity, and they can keep it. That is their negativity, and they can keep it. And you do not have to be affected by it. I know many people are very sensitive. and do accept that negativity and are hurt and feel bad and things. Why do you accept that? It is their problem. If they are saying you are a bad person or if, you, if you, they just don't agree with you, accept that. Believe that you, you are the true person that you are. You do not have to feel bad about that. You can feel great that they're a different person and have a different perspective of things. Do not let it hurt you and bring you into a negative state. That's their negativity, not your negativity. Especially if you know that somebody's not trying to be negativity, but they hurt you inadvertently, you can say, oh, just forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. You've heard that one before, haven't you? Forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And they may not be trying to be hurtful. And they may not try to be. They may just be miss. Their perception of this particular thing is very different than your perception. Perception is very, very difficult in the third dimension. You see only one angle of things when it's brought to you. So, of course, perception is going to be hurtful at times. But... Don't accept it. If you see the exact perception and know that that in your heart is the true way that you believe at that moment, accept that and say, uh, I may not agree with you on that. My perception is different. This is what I believe, and I don't want it to be hurtful or anything of that nature. Your, you, you deal with each other in such a... A 
a way that is so untrue because you'll you'll be hurt and then you'll tell ten people, but you won't tell the person that hurt you. You won't mention anything to them. So then they hear about it by three other or four other people that say, oh, so, so and so is upset with you because you said blah, blah, blah. But you see, direct, direct contact, direct communication with each other is much more important. See, this is the way that things get riled up and that is how war starts even is a rumor from this country goes to a rumor of that country and this country is offended and that country is uh, it is just a matter of proper communication and wanting to understand each other that is it many people have peace talks but they don't want to understand each other. They only want their opinion to be noticed. Well, my opinion is right, and your opinion is wrong, and let's have peace talks, but it's going to go my way. It doesn't work that way. You can't have a peace talk that is one-sided on both sides. Nothing will get done. Okay, there's a little bit of compromise here and there, but still, my basic understanding of peace is my basic understanding of peace. But you're not listening. You're not listening. You're not listening to their concept of peace, which might bring you a revelation of what peace is for them. And you might be able to come to peace together. And I see that with individuals as well. I'm right, you're wrong, and let's have a discussion about it, but only because I'm right. And I'm not going to listen to what you have to say because I'm right. Is that the way peace comes about? No. You have to communicate. That's not communication. That's not communication. Communication is when you're open to each other's thoughts, that you can bond and agree on the things that you all both agree on, and then disagree on the things that you have that do not come together, but yet still be happy with your lives, with who you are and your individuality, and still come to an understanding that you are loving each other, but you are yourself and they are themselves in a way that they do not have to fear a true conversation. True conversation is a one of honesty and love and understanding, not of fear and doubt and manipulation. That is not a true conversation. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Um, also, how do you know if you are being yourself or you're just being negative <laughs> there you will know by the things that happen within you you will feel it you will know it I have told some in private conversations to wear a tape recorder around their neck for an hour in a day and then just go about, or maybe for several hours, and just go about their day and listen to that tape later on the night, you'll be surprised how many negative things you have said during the day. You would be surprised how you said, oh, so-and-so is such a whatever, and they make me sick, and I'm tired of this, and I'm hurting over here, and I'm feeling terrible about that. These are not positive thoughts. I know that some people express their pain in a positive way. Like, I know that this is going to get better, but for right now, it's very hurting me right now. And I'm going to, would you pray for me? Would you do something like that? But if you're going around saying, oh, my head hurts, my back hurts, everything hurts right now, and I just... Does that bring positivity to other people? Do they really want to know about your aches and pains? 
I mean, sure, you do have them, and if somebody asks you how you are, yes, be honest and tell them how you feel. However, do not sit and discuss your medical problems. It is not good for the other person for you that you just sit there and say, oh, this, that, the other thing, and my medication, and this and that. It, it actually is a bummer for the other person. Don't you think so? It's But if you have true conversations, it's not all about you and your problems. It's not about all your problems. That's not a conversation. That's telling other people your problems. Communicate. Understand what communication is. And then, oh, I, I'm off topic already. But, I can tell you this. You will resonate with who you are. You are growing. I understand why people say, I'm not sure if I'm growing or not. But if you reach out beyond that understanding of who you are, once again, reaching out beyond. Reaching out beyond. I don't know who I am. Reach out. Reach in with meditation. Reach out with spirit. Find out. Don't just sit and wonder, but find out who you are, what you're doing. Reach out beyond what you feel. Do the thankfulness, the understanding. Do the meditation. Do the little bit of work. It's not that much work. Meditation is not hard. People think it's hard because, oh, I can't get beyond this. It, a find a way to relax. Find a way to get to those things. And if not, just speak to yourself. If you can't meditate someday, just talk to yourself and say, Self, what is going on today? How I, I think I have a little headache. What's going on with that? DNA, what's wrong with me? Uh, spirit, how am I doing? If you cannot meditate, find a way through prayer. Prayer, powerful stuff. What is prayer? Prayer is something that moves out from you. If you're praying for yourself, it actually comes back around to you and is powerful to yourself. But if other people are praying for you, their prayers come to you and God, but their prayers come to you and minister to you. Do you understand that? Their actual prayers come to you because your name is attached to them. So why wouldn't it go to you? It said, I'm praying for so-and-so. They're having a bad day or they're sick. They're in the hospital. Your God knows you're praying for them, but the power of your prayers is actually going to them and God is attaching himself to those prayers. Does that make sense to you? Why would the prayer go to God and then come back down? It goes right to them. Right to the person that needs the prayer, and then God attaches to that prayer. Does that make sense to you? It goes right to you. If I pray for you, it goes to you. And then God is connected to it because that is the intent. And it is the intent that God goes to that person, so the prayer goes right there. How is that understandable? Yes. Yes, And it that is. is why prayer works. Prayer, there's been studies made on your planet. Prayer works. Because there's energy in your intentions for prayer. Your intentions for prayer. And God is in those intentions. Continue. You were going to say something. I was just going to say, well said. It was a beautiful, beautiful way of saying it. Oh, thank you. I heard you. I didn't want to interrupt. Is there any more comments or questions? Um, yeah. 
the the other one was about when when there is confusion and there are um, you seeing this as from many different points of view um, how to I understand probably meditation will be the best choice to there help are you make that choice. Um, Prayer is one way, meditation is one way. If you know what, if you are confused, then there's many choices. If, if you do not know which choice to make, write down your choices and put them in front of you. And look at them. Look directly at your choices, and then you will have a greater understanding of what it means. Because in here, sometimes, in the mind, all the different choices seem to maybe move around and not connect in any way. Write them down and look at them, and do you know what? One of them will stand out. Why? Because it is the way that you wrote it down that is the truth of the matter. Your subconscious will write it down in such a way that you will be able to go accept it in that written word. Because in here, it's all jumbled and said many ways. But when you go to write things down, it comes out the way that it should. And then you can even put your hands over it and resonate with it and make your choice that way. And if you're still having problem, I would sleep with those pieces of paper near my head. Why? Because your prayer is intending for the choice to be made. And if there is no choice that is right to you, pick one. You have to do something. Indecision is a character trait that you must have. You must be able to make a decision to live your life. You decide to pay your bills. You decide to ride your car to this place. You decide in many ways to do things with your intent and decision, yes, understood. So, intend that you make the right choice. Pray about it. Do not be too long, because when you go too long, you can get five more answers to the question, and you don't want that. You want to be able to deal with the beginnings because that which comes to you first is usually the, the, the information that you need. Okay, and what about once you know what the right choice is, sometimes people can't, uh, fear won't allow them to continue Correct. in that direction. I Like I said, fear and doubt, destroyers. Even though you may fear the answer to the question, is it not the right thing to bring that honesty to that person? It may save them. You may think it will hurt them. It may hurt them. But tell them out of love the answers that you found and why you feel that way. You can't just say, this is the answer. You must have a conversation. Once again, conversation and if they're not open to it and you have said what you needed to say then you must then that is the truth and you have brought it to them and you have done what you should do but fear and doubt are never the answer and even though it may cause a rift at that time you are being true to yourself and is that not important to who you are how can you not be true to yourself and continue and try to be an honest, integral person? You must be true to yourself, but be gentle with the truth. You do not have to be so... The truth does not have to be a slap in the face. The truth does not have to be a stab in the back. The truth can be gentle and loving, and you can say it that way. You can say, this is 
I, I'm sorry I have to say this, and I was afraid to say this because I, I don't want to hurt you, but this is what Spirit has laid on my heart. And you can actually blame Spirit for it because Spirit is who you are in these times. These times are when Spirit ministers to others. When you have to bring truth to others that they don't want to hear, it is the calling on the Spirit to open their eyes, their hearts, their minds, their spirits to what you have to say. Why should you fear when the Spirit is leading? Why should you fear when the truth must be said? It is difficult. And I said many truths that many people did not agree with. As you know, I ended up in a very unhappy situation. But it was necessary. Because why? I was true to myself. And I could not lie. I was tortured for that. And still am. But you know what? The joy that is within me for being myself and being true to the spirit, to love, to the expansion of all is worth it. I am so sorry. It's okay. I get to hug you all the time here. I have, <laughs> my hands are not, I can use them with expression, but not with things of um, task. So, is there any more questions? Yes, Karen had a question. Just, just my question is about if you have a message for me, and also uh, about my life as in service. What is that I need to do for my life in service, and what direction am I going? That is very good. Actually, you have many services. You are not just a, a single gifted person. Your radio shows have helped many to understand spirit, understand who they are in spirit, gather that they're not just out there alone. Do you understand that portion of it? Well, I, if that's the case, I'm very humbled and... and it is true. It is true. Plus, there are things that you do in, with counseling of other people, with different things that have been very helpful and successful. You have healing in your hands as, all, as well, which you don't use as often as you should. However, you do have many gifts, and you, at this time, you're also working. Is that not correct? Yes, yes. But you are bringing a greater understanding of who you are to the workplace. Your example will be noted. Working and you, keeping yourself prosperous, one day you will have more prosperity than you ever dreamed. But only because you've given out of love and understanding only because you're becoming your true self. Only because you are making sure that you make the right decisions and choices. I, I, I just want to be as much in service as possible. That's really the only thing I really want, you know. And so I see I, that you are working hard to do that and you are in service quite a bit more than many people and so do not worry your your positivity your direction is already carved out and you will move forward in a great way and fear not have no doubt that you are serving as much as you can at the moment okay all right that's my only question so thank you so very much you're welcome much mm. love to you much love to you Thank you. Hello, Jesus. This is Guru Dan. How are you? Yes, I know you. 
I have uh, three quick questions. Uh, the first one for our member, Kirsi. She wants to know if you have any messages for her. How do you spell that? You say it correctly. K I R S I. Kirsi? Kirsi. Yeah. Yeah. Kirsi. That I understand more now. I knew that that wasn't the right pronunciation. Um, yes. Reach beyond third dimension right now. Third dimension is holding you back. You're getting bombarded with it in many different ways. Your spirit is full of, of directions, but you're not sure which one to take right now because directions are not something that you were taught how to use in some ways. I'm, not, I'm sure that makes sense to you, but it may not make sense to others. But right now, you must reach beyond this third dimensional uh, negativity. You're, you're greater than that. You have gifts. You have understandings. You have fourth dimensional activity. You have love. You heard what I said earlier. My message to you is be yourself now. We have been talking about being yourself. Now is your time to break free from these others other things that would tend to make you move in a direction that's not yourself. Yourself is a great and wonderful person. And I love you dearly and I thank you for the good that you do. What other questions do you have? So I had a question, uh, the same question for myself. Do you have any special message for me? And then I have one more question after that. Yes. You have, you, although you come off as being very confident, you do have confidence issues about fear about who you are in some ways, about how you express yourselves and how you interact with others. But fear not, Guru Dan. You are moving forward in a great way. You are loved and respected by many and you will be who you are always and just let that shine through because there are those that will want to stop that but you have a great deal to share you have a great deal to say and there are things about you that people do not know that are wonderful and and giving and you are a healer as well in some ways thank you Thank you for that. Uh, Hukalo is such a great group, and it's very dynamic in all its spirituality, but it, it experiences special problems because it is such a special group. And I'm wondering if you have any wisdom that you can impart that's special and specific to the group to help them get oh, through yes. some of these energies that we go through. Is there anything that you have that you can offer? Of course. With any kind of group of this nature, any kind of group of this nature. You will always find many different opinions. You will always find many disagreements. You will always find those that come in to be the spoiler, to make things rough for others. But that is the intention of the group, is to be the freedom that it is, to have the love and understanding that it has for each other. And you can group together against the negativity and pray about it. Has it not happened that many negative people have come, they have either changed or they have left. But they were there for a purpose, to show you each an individuality of what, who they were and what they were all about. And this has helped you grow as a group. Because what happens? You just end up discussing these people with their negativities. You end up discussing the positivity. You end up discussing all the things in a group. Whereas if it was just a channeler, you would not have that ability to do. But with a group, you can come together, fellowship together, and understand each other 
with true communication. And so with a group like this, the communication is what is the thing that brings you up and together and full of love and energy. You get through these things together. And these, there are going to be special problems. And they're there for a reason. Because no group is perfect. No group can ever have uh, hundreds of people belonging to it and no problems whatsoever. <laughs> As you can see that. So these are learning curves. These are things that you can learn from other people that you don't want for your own life and resonate with who you are, your expression of who you are at that moment. Make sure that it is true. Do you truly feel that way? How do you truly feel when this person does that? And have a conversation and not just put your point of view out there, but listen to all the other points of view. You might gain a perspective of spirit that you didn't have before because everybody has this perspective of spirit from their own, their own angle and none of them are necessarily wrong, but they are a different person. Perspective. And they were brought about and grown by different thought processes and different things that happened in their lives. And therefore, learn from one another, and you will find what truly resonates after you found the diamond in the rough. Can you not polish it and make it shine? That is who you are. You are all diamonds. And now, some of you are learning how to shine. Some of you are learning how to sparkle. And then there are still some that are grinding away, trying to find a facet that might sparkle or place. But do not fear or doubt, but intend that you find that shininess that is you. <laughs> and... These problems are meant to be for a reason, and you will not have a community without them. In fact, the community would not survive without them, because you need something to talk about every day. <laughs> and sometimes talking about the things that you do not like about other people, remember, Sometimes the things that you don't like about others are the things that you don't like about yourself. They're too bossy. Oh, there's a good one. <laughs> They're too bossy, and so I am just going to take a stand and tell them what's it. You know what? You're maybe too bossy. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? Many of the traits that other people have that you don't like are some of your traits. So remember to resonate with your true self and maybe to resonate with that other person and have a true conversation. You're not just going to tell them off. You're not just going to give them what full. You're not just going to slap them around, but you're going to have a conversation. And you know what? You're going to be a leader, not just a bossy person but become a leader. Learn what the traits of a leader are and learn what the traits of a bossy person are. Learn what the traits of a and someone that's undereducated are and learn the traits of educating them in a true conversational way. You may say, oh, I can't talk to them. They're too dumb. They're too out of the loop. No. Resonate with their spirit, you see. It's not about here. It's about here. It's not about here. Although you, you, they can be connected. And that's what I love to see, the connection between here and here, no separation between here and here. When they work together, it's always better. That's wonderful. Thank you for your input, Jesus. I, I really You're appreciate welcome. it. Barbara. Blessings, Jesus. Blessings to you as well. This is Barbara Joy. 
Barbara Joy, I love that. Joy is always a good thing. <laughs> yes, I think so too. Um, there's a, a question from Michelle in the uh, questions room, um, and I think it's a, a good question. It's something I've wondered before, so I'm going to ask it. Feel free. She says, many Christians claim aliens, UFOs, Reiki, etc. are of Satan. What is the best response for this? Are a what? What are they? They are of Satan. Are of Satan. Oh, well, this is because that is what they were taught. Um, just as prejudice is taught in each person and saying that this, uh, this is bad or this is good, these, this color of people is not good, this color of people is bad, and they're from Satan or they're not good or they're not worthy or whatever, it is taught. The truth is, when you talk, they say things of this nature, say, you know, I love everything and everybody. And if there's aliens and if there's UFOs, I love them too. I love everything because God loves everything. If you believe they're from Satan, then you're putting your beliefs on them. That's not fair to them. That's not fair to them. Because Satan, because God created these beings, tell them that. God created them, just like he created you. If they exist, God created them. Did he not? It's as simple as that. That's a simple answer. God created them too. Why do they have to be of Satan? Satan didn't create them. God created them. They're not from this earth. God created them. If they come down and you are not happy with them, then pray for their souls. Excellent. But you can pray for them to be wonderful and good beings. Do not just judge them. You see, when you say that anything is evil, you're judging it. And are you allowed to judge as human beings? Is your judgment necessary? God's judgment is necessary, but not yours. Do not judge. That is taking a whole civilization and putting it under a category that is not true. But I hope I gave you some suggestions on how to deal with that. There's actually even more suggestions than that because love, unconditional love, does not see evil in everything. That is fear and doubt, fear and doubt, fear and doubt. You understand that? When they are taught to fear and doubt, that becomes their life. If you are taught by the church to fear this and fear that and fear the other thing, that's how you live your life in fear. Exactly. Thank you very much. You are welcome. Also, um, uh, I have read some things on the internet about um, when a soul leaves the body after the body has died, that um, when the soul sees the light, that it may be a false light um, by uh, reptilians uh, to trap us somehow. No, no. Before, uh, th you can resonate with the light. There is always a resonation. If you are a spiritual person, you know what lights are good and what lights are bad. So if you're going into the light and you're going, uh-oh, there's something wrong here, then don't go. If you are going into the light and you see your relatives, you see your family, you see a love, you feel greatness, then by all means, step ahead. But you do not have to worry about that because a reptilian light will only be for those that are deceived, will only be for those that have intentions of doing wrong. Your intentions are doing well. Why would God let you go into the wrong light? will not happen. There are people with fear and doubt. Why would they tell you something like that? They want you to fear and doubt. Does that make sense to you? Absolutely. 
Why would they want you to fear and doubt? Because they are not happy with who they are. There is a lot of people teaching a lot of negative things out there, and people are going, ooh, there's going to be war, there's going to be this, there's going to, this is going to happen, it's going to be very negative. Why would they want to build that fear and doubt in you? Why wouldn't they be speaking of something of love? Because you can make it through anything in your life if you have the strength of love and of God in your system. I know some people are not even supported by family, but can make it through with the strength of God because he is strong, and you are strong because you are part of him. And when you connect those two parts, him and you with your soul, what other power do you, you need? Now, do not fall into the fear and doubt. Do not fall into the, those traps of, uh-oh, I'm afraid to die because I'm not sure if I'm going to go through a reptilian light or a god light. No. You do not have to fear that. Wonderful. Do you have a message for me? Yes. Keep growing the way you're growing now because you are becoming a fountain of faith and knowledge your spirit is starting to grow. Even though you have third dimensional problems, we all, you know, you have all had them, I had them, we all have them. But um, it is, a, you have a physical malady, don't you? Yes. What is that? Oh, I understand. You know what? You can pray about that and it will be healed. Thank you. Got Thank it. you very much. Blessings. Thank you. Much love. I want you to grow in faith, faith in God and know that he is there with you because you are a bright light and His your healing will be a testimony to others. Just believe. Don't doubt. Reach out beyond. It is there for you because it is no longer something that you should have to deal with. And that is what I'm telling you. If you continue to deal with it, it's only because you you didn't reach out. Who is next? Uh, hello, Jesus. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Crawl, <clears throat> is that you? Yes. Nice to hear you. Yes. Um, I had two questions. My first one is being, is there any information, any knowledge I need to know that is helpful in my life at this moment? What I have to say to you is all your questions will be answered shortly. There are many things that you are questioning in your life. There is many questions about you and about yourself and about others that you are you are having right now but they're all going to have a happy solution and you are growing in a way that is very interesting to me you you're growing in you're becoming actually more alien than human sometimes <laughs> because that interests you and that is part of who you are in your personality although you must stay third dimensional and must stay in the third dimensional with your life forces you can visit the fourth dimensional areas very soon in a way that you have not done so before and so do not worry about that uh, that is coming and just be patient that is what they're teaching you right now is a little bit of patience a little bit of hold on there it'll come in its own time in its right time even though you don't understand why it couldn't happen now it is going to happen and it is teaching you the patience that you need does that make sense to you yes I have been getting that feeling that patience is a important lesson yes it is and for you especially right now because there will be certain civilizations that you meet that you will need to be patient with. 
because learning process and curves are different with different planets and species and you will be involved with that and there will be times that you will not want to be patient but you will have learned patience in this period of time and you will be grateful for her learning it because your joy will still be in where, who you are and what you are all about. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Be blessed. And move forward yes. to change things for the galaxy. Yes, thank you. And my second question is, um, I was told that I had alien beings around me and I have been meditating to find out who they are, but I haven't been getting any answers. Are you able to help assist with that? Yes. Patience. You're not getting answers because they want you to be patient. Did you hear that? Who that I'm not sure who that is. Thank you. They are saying also be patient. They will tell you. But your greatest need now is to learn patience and so everything that you want to know you are being impatient about so they are giving you this gift. You will learn it and you will be very happy that you have learned it. <laughs> uh, okay. When um, you finally accept it that you are going to be patient because you really haven't accepted it yet. <laughs> You're going, okay, I, the lesson is for me to be patient. However, I don't want to be patient. <laughs> so when you learn, when you finally say, all right, I will be patient, then within a short time after that, if they know that you truly mean it and are truly being true to yourself about that, then you'll find out many things. <laughs> Uh, okay. Um, oh, if I could just get in one more question. Um, I wanted to know if there are any civilizations out there that are that are that have any that have an Egyptian style type of culture to them, because I've been yes. getting uh, lots of Egyptian Im images lately. Yes, there are actually more than one civilization that have been. Uh, visited by that culture and have many artifacts from that particular species and yes the there are many planets out there not just one but they were uh, great travelers and explorers in their time and they've been there continue in another galaxy doing the same thing as, as they did in this galaxy so yes many many planets have some of their artifacts and some of their culture and some of their information on them and their earth has much of their uh, culture in them in the, in the Egyptian area however they were more than one place on the planet they were in Machu Picchu they were in the Inca civilization they were in the um, several other uh, smaller civilizations on your planet and left much information, much, much information there that has not even been discovered yet. <laughs> so yes. Thank you. And what is their name? I did not say their name. I'm asking. Ah, their name is, well, you know, they have several different names in the, in the galaxy. Uh, but you call the, them the Egyptians and the Incas and the but their true name is the Vendushans. That is their original name, the Vendushans, and they are a very, very, very old species. And you you know them by a different name now, but I'm not going to mention that at this time. They have a, they have evolved and changed their names about three or four times. So that is what they are. Because they have been to so many planets, they do change their names here and there. So, Thank you. Anybody else in the room? 
um, have any questions. Sandy has a question. Hello, Sandy. Hi, Jesus. How are it's you? It's wonderful to have you here. It's wonderful to be here. I was just wondering if it was possible to ask for a physical healing. It is possible. You. Yes. It is possible to have physical healings from me if that is what is necessary mm. for your life and things of that nature. What area do you feel that you need healed um, the most? Um, neuropathy in my left hand and arm. Very good. One moment, please. And I will find out from the God, the spirit of life is, uh, from the beginning. Ah, ha, ha, ha. And you know there are several passages in the Bible when those that believed, even when they did not even get close to Jesus, that they could be healed and they were healed. Because the power of Jesus is not only from the Spirit, it's from the, the beginning of time, from the beginning of understanding, from the beginning of creation, and therefore creating new parts in the body, creating and making whole that which was the blueprint in the beginning of the body. That is what, if you can believe, can happen to you. The new blueprint, the old blueprint comes in as new and you are a new person. You feel a new feeling. It can happen immediately or it can happen over some time. It is depending on your intention. It's depending on your love and your belief system. I do believe. And therefore yeah. you shall have it. The belief system is what is mm -hmm. what makes it so. Mm -hmm. And of course the Spirit of God. Go and be healed. Thank you. Do you feel any difference? Did you feel anything come in? No. Okay. That is all right. I did. And so it, it is. is. And so it is. Something came in. You may not be able to be aware of it at this moment. The people in the room felt it. And they're saying yes. Okay. And that is that is all that's necessary. Mm -hmm. Continue. I've not really come to do a healing on a lot of people. I've just come to speak. But I will do that for you. Thank you. Can I ask a question about beliefs? Certainly. I'm, I'm afraid of choosing to believe what I want to believe because I don't want to misunderstand what is real. How can I choose to create what I want through my beliefs without deluding myself? Do not be afraid of your beliefs. That is the first thing. The second thing I will tell you is this. What is your vision of God? What does he appear to be to you? Unknowable. He's unknowable. But what is that part of your soul that is you? It is God. So he is knowable through the soul. Do you understand that? I understand the words. You understand I don't know the, the word. experience. Exactly. So this is what I want you to do. You, you, are, you are a meditator, aren't you? You do meditate. Occasionally. Yes. And I want you to meditate on what the soul means to you, what the soul means to the body, what the soul means to the emotions, and what the soul means to the spirit. You can do that all at once. You can say, what does the soul mean to me? But because you're going to find out that God and the soul are connected. They can't help but be, because they are part, you are a part of God. And your fears and doubts are what keeps you away from knowing him in a way that you do not know him now. And let me tell you something. When you know God, you know him as pure love. You cannot be led astray by God. So why fear him? Why fear that you will find something other than God? Why fear that you would find something misleading when God is there to show you his own way? His way is your way because that's who he wants you to be. Part of who he is, but that doesn't mean you have to change your life 
cut your hair, be a different person, go around telling people you must believe in God, your example will speak all that. Your example will be that who is God. And your love for others will show that you are part of God. Now, he sees in you the great light that he gave you as a soul, but he sees all those fears and doubts also, so that keeps him from giving you some understanding. And this is what I'm going to do. I want you to meditate on that, and I want you to know that God is expansion. He is not someone that's boxed in like these fearful religions that they created around me, or created around Buddha, or created around Mohammed, or any of these people, that they have to be so afraid of doing something that they, they have to live in fear and not really be themselves. You see, they're not really being themselves. They're being what is taught to them to be, to be God. But God is not taught, teaching you to be fearful. God is not teaching you to be boxed in. God is not fear teaching you to be something that you cannot be. You can only be what you can be. And that is something that you should be excited about. Because you are unique among individuals. You are unique. You are unique. You are unique. Everyone has their own gifts and powers and creativity from God. Because God is a creator. You are a creator in the sense that you can create who God is to you in some senses because he's created you in the same way. And so believe that God is not judging you. Believe that God is not a one that is going to bring fear, doubt, and hate upon you, but joy, love, and understanding beyond no other one. You cannot know him because he is too wonderful. You cannot sense him in the third dimension the way he really is because he is too expansive, too joyful. And when you meet him, every fiber of your being, every molecule of your body will be in love with everything. In love with being, in love with the sensibility. Your senses will go crazy and you will know that you are with God. But go and don't doubt that you can find what he wants for you. Because your intention is to find the truth. Why would he give you anything else? Exactly. Why would he give you anything else? When your intention is set on the truth, why would he give you anything else? If you're seeking God and wanting truth, why would he give you anything but truth? If you ask for a piece of bread, would he give you a snake? I don't think so. <laughs> yes, and there is an example for you. If you need food, would he give you just a nice bed to sleep in and let you starve to death? No. He would give you what you need. And if you're looking for truth, he will give you the truth. One area in which I have fear and doubt is my mother is suffering from macular degeneration. Yes. And I hear her pray, and I hear her pray what sounds to me in vain. And part of me doubts that she can have the miracle she wants. But I want to believe. Prayer is never in vain. Prayer is never in vain. If the miracle does not happen, it's still built her spirit. It's still building other things because prayer is powerful and prayer is something that is necessary now follow me on this if she does not get her miracle does that mean you should not believe that she is not with God or God does not exist it may be part of her contract to have this and there may be reasons for this actually her faith is growing greater when she believes and prays. And why should she not have the miracle? Why shouldn't she have it? But you know what keeps her from it? Her belief system is has fears and doubts, just like yours. 
and those fears and doubts keep her away from healing. And so, as do my own, of course. So I'm not saying that she is not a faithful woman, or that God is not with her, or that God doesn't even want to heal her. That is not the truth. But in third dimension, humans keep themselves away from those things. They say, oh, I believe, I believe, and I believe in miracles and things, but they've never really seen them. And so their belief system doubts. But if they could bring themselves to believe as a mustard seed of faith, like was said in the Bible, the tiniest, wee bitest of faith can move a mountain. If you believe that, if you can believe a mustard seed of faith this small can move a mountain, then you are on your way to great miracles and great life. Because it only takes that much faith. Well, that takes me back to the beginning of my question. I want to believe, but I don't want to delude. I don't want to convince myself through my belief in a way that deludes myself. Then just meditate and ask for purity. Meditate and ask for the truth. Meditate and ask for who am I? Why do I feel this way? Find out who you are first, and then you can find out God. Because he's saying to me right now is, Find out who you are in the true spirit, and there will be no problem finding out who God is. Okay. Much love to you, and many blessings, and continue healing. It is about time for me to leave, okay. and I am sorry I took all the time. How about I am sure? Thank you, Jesus. Um, do you think you, you can give us a blessing before you go? Of course. I wouldn't leave without it, really. I asked that the power of God fall on you and open your eyes in a greater way than you've ever been opened before. Because knowing God is a great and wonderful joy a great and wonderful love that you still have not totally experienced and will not until you pass from this existence. However, I want you to know his joy, his love, his wisdom, his understanding, his way of doing things that are so far beyond the third dimension and do not interfere with anything. They do not interfere with any dimension because they are pure and they fit into all dimensions. And I want to bring that blessings to you that you do not have to be a special kind of person to experience the love and joy of God. You don't have to be many gifted to enjoy the love and gifts of God. He can give you more. I just call down his love upon you. I call down his sensibility of kindness to one another, to you. His ability to change the world through you as an example. I grant that to each of you so that you may be the full and beautiful creations that he meant you to be and use him as a tool in your life to experience the greatest things. I pray for your healings, everyone, because healing opens the thought process as well. It shows you and gives you faith. It brings in something new. And it makes you want to speak about it. Makes you want to explode with joy. Be that which is love, and love is of God, and God is of man in his soul. Blessings to you all. Reach out beyond 
because that is what you are meant to do at this time. Learn the power of yourself through God. Reach out beyond. <laughs> and the joy that comes with it. Many blessings to you and Yefasita Pambushu Turotambisati Pacham Shalil Upwitfitse. Thank you for those words and thank you for coming and uplifting us. Much love to you all. And may you bask in the love that God wants to give you. Namaste.